Hello, everyone. Welcome to my next Monday Bible. My guest is Professor Martin Ebers, President of Robotics and AI Law Society, Professor at uh, University of Tartu, Permanent Fellow of Humboldt University, recently awarded by Wallenberg Foundation for his privacy research. Uh, hi, Martin. It's great you are here. Hello. It's very good um, to be here. Thank you. We are here to discuss latest developments of AI uh, Act. Uh, what do you think about latest text, uh, compromise proposal? Well, I would say first of all that the AI Act proposal um, is a right uh, step into the right uh, direction because we need not only in uh, Europe, uh, but also elsewhere regulation on AI. So that now Europe has become the first uh, mover, I think is um, a good thing. I also like um, the idea of a risk-based approach, uh, that is uh, to say, once something falls under the scope of the AI Act, then um, the uh, density of regulation depends on how risky an AI system is. On the other hand, um, the risk-based um, approach that we can find in the AI Act uh, has a couple of problems. So first of all, even if we do not talk about chat GPT, uh, we have the problem that we have only like these uh, prohibited AI systems and then the high-risk AI systems. Basically, most uh, of the AI Act is about the high-risk AI systems, but then we have nothing. So we have these uh, AI systems with minimal uh, risks and there are only minimal uh, rules uh, for them. And then also the decision what belongs into the high-risk AI sector and uh, not is, of course, highly uh, debated. Um, and uh, this is not a risk-based approach in the sense that really on an individual use uh, case or for an individual sector, it is like um, looked into how risky the AI system is. Uh, but then uh, we have abstract cases that are predefined by the European Commission. Once it falls into the high risk um, AI uh, classification, then all kinds of obligations are being triggered. And that is a little bit problematic. And of course, like when we now talk about uh, generative AI, um, especially <clears throat> chat uh, GPT, uh, we have the, uh, also a lot of uh, problems. Um, basically, all the debates that we are having uh, right now in uh, Brussels are due to the fact that the European Commission did not take into account the specific features of generative AI systems in their proposal. Aren't you afraid that we uh, we become, of course, well-regulated part of the world, but uh, the tools uh, or uh, vendors or producers uh, will not uh, mm, will leave Europe or will not uh, enter Europe? Yeah, I can totally uh, see this problem. And uh, actually, just following uh, the news, uh, we learned that uh, Google uh, released BART uh, in uh, hundreds of countries, except for all the European uh, countries. And then also taking into account uh, what Altman uh, said regarding uh, ChatGPT uh, and uh, whether it will be deployed in uh, Europe once the AI Act uh, is uh, adopted um, is then uh, the question. On the other hand, let's not forget uh, that um, we have something like the Brussels effect uh, that um, basically refers uh, to the fact uh, that uh, a certain um, act that is made in Brussels uh, does not only have extraterritorial effect in the sense uh, that uh, companies have to comply as soon as they offer their products and services um, towards European citizens, but also voluntarily follow the Brussels uh, rules. And the same can maybe be observed also with the AI Act, provided, uh, of course, that the AI Act has convincing rules. But by and large, I would uh, say, I mean, the European market is quite a big uh, market. So uh, U.S. American companies and all kinds of other companies outside the European Union will maybe think twice whether uh, they will totally withdraw their products and services from the European market once the AI Act is there or whether they will comply. And I mean, compliance with uh, a sound uh, legislation is also something you can use for branding and that you refer to we comply with European standards, we have developed something that is in line with safety requirements, but also with fundamental rights. Uh, it's really interesting what, what you say. Uh, Sam Altman has recently been to Europe and he told uh, that he, he wonders if OpenAI is compliant with AI Act and uh, if they will not be able to comply with our rules, uh, uh, they will withdraw. What do you think about it? Uh, I think it is uh, really quite uh, too early now uh, to ask the question uh, whether 
um, JetGPT complies uh, with upcoming regulation because there is so much discussion uh, right now. So as I mentioned before, in the original proposal of the European Commission, there are no specific provisions uh, regarding so-called general purpose AI systems. Then uh, the uh, Council at the end of last uh, year in its uh, general approach introduced some specific provisions that is basically the latest uh, development. We have to uh, wait until the European Parliament um, will uh, take its uh, vote. That will happen mid-June. Uh, and uh, then in case uh, they um, reach consensus, the trilogue ne negotiations uh, will start. And I think during the uh, trilogue negotiations, a lot of things can happen. Okay, so I would say let's make a follow up after we have full ready AI Act and we can make another short podcast about it. Thank you very much, Martin. It was great discussion. Great having you here. And thank you very much. Uh, and see you guys uh, next week. Thank you. It was a pleasure.